Well, I'm in from the sea and I'm here in LA with the tofu and mud tubs and smog. And there's suntan jacuzzis that wimp Richard Simmons, a lot of rich fat women sweating in their leotards. Yeah, Christmas is over, the gifts are all broken, the cheap plastic kits from Taiwan. All the trees are dried up and thrown out with the tinsel and Santas and styrofoam balls. The new year is in, Guy Lombardo is dead, so let's hoist up a mug to the old. To the year 81, torture, horses, hostages, hostages, Brooke Shield selling her prepubescent thing. Some, <laughs> and some poor Irish starker is starving in Belfast, so Reagan cuts down the school lunch. The kids suck up ketchup, it lands on the floor, and the Mexican janitor slips. Yeah, a year for mankind, it's Bo, Derek, and video. Pinheads, you blow up some blip. You get a free game, and the Pope takes a slug, and a few of the hostages were Negroes. They let those ones go. <laughs> so they shoot up some rocket, a space shuttle probe, and Walter Cronkite, a whole geek review. Yeah, it's all done for science. It costs them five billion. The astronauts go in their suits. The moral majority, Falwell religion, it's Darwin gets kicked out of school. And the Bible is good, and the monkeys get blamed, and they're sent to the lab where they're forced to watch reruns and lamp onto my feet. Andrew O'Connor, she sits on that bench, and she sweats because it's hot in the robe. All the medflies get nauseous. They beg Justice Berger to gas him or open the door. The poles go on strike, and they mass in the streets. Lech Walesa gets thrown into jail. With a stale crust of bread and a piece of kielbasa, the poor guy winds up with the cramps. Then the Patco controllers jump off of the hotel crash skyway. The planes get stacked up. And the nuclear AWACS and backfire nuclear milkshake. Some congressman's wife shows her you who's in a centerfold. A big royal wedding with jugglers and fairies. The Scottish queen speaks to the fans. But one blast from her denture's breath, the odors drew comments. But later the incident was forgotten. So the young Prince of Wales throws his wife in a train. Lady Di puts her cheeks to the glass. She blows them a kiss and uh, Prince Charles uh, and gives them a heave and Prince Charles knows the pressure is on. So another year sucked down the cesspool. Johannes, my bladder is bursting, let's go. Maybe next year the world will find love, peace and hope. I'm about to throw up and start the show. <laughs> Tonight's presentation of Video Playhouse is brought to you by Change Masters, masters of making change for over 40 years. And now, act one of tonight's play entitled, A Pattern for Success. That was the worst movie I have ever seen. How can they continue to turn out that kind of junk? Chevy Chase as an air traffic controller? Come on! Well, at least the color was good. Hey, honey, are we gonna wear these raincoats all night? Don't you think we better? I mean, just in case you know who drops over? What? You mean Clyde? Well, not just Clyde. There's Blinky and Pinky. And Inky. Yeah, I guess you're right. Better be safe than sorry, huh? Boy, that film was a dog. Oh, well, at least we didn't stuff ourselves at the theater. God, I'm starved. Then eat. Oh. 
Oh, these are great. Mm, I can't get enough of them. Mm. Uh-oh. Don't worry, honey. Don't worry. It's quiet in his pals. I just know it. <laughs> When you need change, real change, you don't want the hassle that goes with finding the proper broker, especially when, for a small annual fee, you can be a member of Change Masters, the exclusive club that caters to you, the man with the dollar. Change Masters offers the most complete facilities ever, and all for just one purpose, to make change. You see, at Change Masters, we even have our own private quarters with an environment to satisfy practically any denomination. So, if you've been looking for change, and the right place to get it, come to Change Masters, your exclusive place for change. I don't know. Even if Chris Christofferson could act, it doesn't justify spending $40 million on that piece of crud. And everything was out of focus, too. Right. I don't think we should go to these new movies. That's all there is to it. Now, this time, sweetheart, remember, go for the pie just as soon as you hear uh -oh. any... It's Clyde and his pals again. <laughs> <laughs> Video Playhouse presentation of a pattern for success. And, as always, starring our own Video Playhouse players, this is Bruce Mahler saying good night and reminding you that television is better than ever. And everybody tried to make me feel at home, but I was still a little scared. We started reading the material for the show, and we read piece after piece. But after a while, I said to myself, boy, this stuff really stinks. I mean, the material was real bad. It just wasn't funny. And when it was over, they asked me what I thought. So I, I told them. But they were very nice. They said the writers would write all new material for me. I could believe it. But when I got it, the paper was all yellowy and the edges were all bent and frayed like it had been lying in a drawer or something. But it wound up working out okay. And yes, I would even do it again. I think. It's broken. I can't get it to spell poop. <laughs> it's probably the batteries, honey. Well, how can you have something to do if the batteries are all dead? Oh, Zachary. Hey, hey, wait a second, darling. I'll be right back. I've got a surprise for you. Come on, stupid computer toy. Come on, spell poop. <laughs> Come on, you dumb machine. 
Zachary, I got something that I got you for Christmas that I forgot to give you. Which hand? Um, that one. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> what is it? Honey, it's a teddy bear. <laughs> what? It, it's a teddy bear, sweetheart. It's for you. A, a little teddy bear. Does it shoot rockets? <laughs> Zachary, sweetheart, teddy bears don't shoot rockets. Well, then what do you do with it? Well, you play with it, honey. You can, uh, you can hold it in your arms. You can uh, cuddle with them, you know, or talk to them. Gee, they're really just loads of fun, sweetheart. Here. It doesn't shoot rockets? No, darling, it's just a furry little friend for you. Like one that mother had when she was a little girl. Mom, you play with it. Oh, Zach, really? Come on, Mommy, you play with it. Show me how. Show you? Okay. Um, well, uh, hello, Mr. Bear. Hi, lady. How are you? Well, I'm just fine. A little tired from the holidays, you know, but uh, other than that, how are you? I'm just fine. Nice day, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's a really nice day. <laughs> Come on, see? Mommy, play with yeah, it. Yeah, but Come see on. how much fun they are? Come on, honey. Come on, you play with it more. Yeah? yeah. All, all right. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, Mr. Bear, uh, what would you like to do? Would you uh, like to play tag? Sure, but aren't you a little old for that? <laughs> well, Mr. Bear, I'm really not so old. <laughs> well, Mr. Bear knows one thing for sure. You're too old to be wearing them tight blue jeans. Says who? Says Mr. Bear. You ain't got the rear end for it, girl. Uh, well, uh, what exactly is, is the matter with my uh, rear end, as you called it? It's too flat, that's what. And it's starting to sag. Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Bear. Um, a woman is much, much more than just her body. Don't tell me, tell Harry Parks. Who's Harry Parks, Mom? He's the college kid that mows the front lawn. Your ma loves to peek out the window at him and watch his pectorals vibrate. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? What are you saying? Don't play dumb with me, Mama. You know you get very turned on by any slim-bellied buck that swivels his hips through your broken-down dreams. Look, fuzzbag. I got plenty of better things to do than sit here talking to, to a some stuffed animal toy. Like what, Mama? Like sneaking into the laundry closet and sucking up that good scotch? <laughs> You got a very big mouth, Mr. Bear. Who cares? Not Mr. Bear. You're one annoying little smart aleck, aren't you, Mr. Bear? Who cares? Not Mr. Bear. I don't care. Yeah? Yeah? Well, maybe this'll change your tune, you pathetic sack of synthetic fiber. How about that, huh? Mr. Bear don't need eyes to see your life is full of lies. <laughs> well, well...
there are many games one can play with a teddy bear. That's, they're, they're really, really loads of fun, honey. Now, uh, Mother's going to check the laundry. <laughs> Put a few things in the dryer. Hi, Mr. Bear. How do you spell poop? Poop? Why, that's easy. P-O-O-P. -O -O hey, Mom, this is great. No. This would be the first time I'd be saying this publicly, but you see, I, I dropped acid the night I did the show. Really, that's true. For the entire show, I was tripping my brains out. <laughs> see, this friend of mine who lives up on the Yucatan River in this restored conquistador ship, I think it's Bizarro's or Bizarro, whatever that explorer's name was. So anyway, this guy gets these hallucinogenics from the same guy that turns on Carlos Castaneda. So I thought, well, that's cool enough. If it's good enough for Don Juan, it's good enough for me. Well, so to tell you the truth, I don't remember too much about the show itself, except that I was laughing a lot. At one point, I laughed so hard, I thought I'd broken my face or something. My skull was showing. But I was too scared to look in the mirror. Nobody said anything, so I guess I just forgot about it. But the amazing thing was, somehow, I actually got through the show. And everybody thought I did great. So naturally, I didn't tell anybody I was tripping, and nobody asked. I guess it's my image or something. But I had a great old time. Hell, I, I wanted to become a regular. <laughs> This is the Friday edition with your correspondents, Melanie Chartoff and Rich Hall. Good evening. I'm Melanie Chartoff, and joining me tonight for a look at the events of the past year is Rich Hall. Welcome, Rich. Thank you, Melanie. Well, 1981, what a year. It was a year when uh, large Z-shaped translucent tubes became as familiar as the morning paper. A uh, year when people wore digital hats. A year when life was discovered on uh, Pluto. Um, Rich, excuse me. This is the 1982 wrap-up. There's been a mistake in the, in the paper <laughs> last year. But anyway, it was quite a year, 1981, which is what we're dealing with tonight. A year that saw many changes. But we, before we get to reviewing the events of the past year, we thought it would be proper here to say a goodbye to some of the people that we all know and love. Andy Griffith, Greta Garbo, Ginger Rogers, Norman Mailer, Eddie Fisher. These people aren't dead or anything like that. We just thought it'd be nice to say goodbye to them. <laughs> Bye. 1981, a uh, new Republican administration took office and uh, quickly made the economy its first priority. However, their methods uh, for curing our economic ills struck many as rather puzzling. So here are the report on that as a visitor to this country, Dr. Frederick Treves. Thank you, Rich. The economy, like nature, is often cruel. The year 1981 began with crippling inflation and ended with the deformity of a recession. And yet, your government chose to institute a tax cut for the wealthy and began cutting back on social programs. Would you step out, please? <laughs> My search to discover how such inequities could be tolerated led me to a site the likes of which I have never seen before. Behold, the Elephant Man. <laughs> The skull, as we can see, is unusually thick. This accounts, this accounts perhaps for the random movements of the head. And on top of the head, there's a reddish brown growth. Moving on to the body, we see that the right side or supply side is overdeveloped, while the 
left side is beginning to wither and die from disuse. <laughs> Turning him around, we see that the spine... We see that the spine is abnormally curved, you see. This is probably a result of the contortions necessary to shelter various top aides and cabinet members. Moving down to the legs, we see that the knees are beginning to buckle under the weight of not being able any longer to blame his difficulties on his predecessor. <laughs> he is capable of speech, although only from index cards. <laughs> Initially, you might be startled by him. Most people were. <laughs> However, amazement turned to amusement, and that in turn led to elective office. <laughs> Ron, you may say something now, if you wish. <laughs> I am not an animal. I am your president. And thank you. <laughs> and after a year like this, that admission takes a lot of courage. Well, I think that covers everything. Back to you, Rich and Marie. heavily into numerology, 1981 was an amazing year. Our own Mary Edith Burrell knows a lot about this number stuff, so let's check in with her right now. Mary Edith? Thanks, Melanie. Yes, 1981 was a fascinating year from a numerologist's standpoint. Now, just think about it. If you add one, nine, eight, and one together, you get what? 19. Now, the last time that happened was in 1972. And it won't happen again until 1990. And then after that, it doesn't happen again until 2017. Now, if you multiply the numbers 1, 9, 8, and 1 together, you get, you get 72. 72. Well, let's see. If, if you divide 1981 by... 72, you get... You get uh, 27 with 37 left over. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, well, um... In any case, to numerologists, 1981 could best be described very simply as a 27 with 37 left over. Back to you, Richard Mellon. Well, in, uh, in order to find out the mood of the country as we entered 1982, Friday's commissioned a year-end poll, and uh, over 1,500 people were asked a battery of questions relating to various issues of the day. And uh, our first question was, uh, do you think things are better now than they were on January 1st, 1981? And the results were uh, better, 33%, uh, worse, 33%, and 33%, uh, not sure. Well, that uh, <clears throat> doesn't really prove anything. So let's go on to the next question, which was, do you think we're closer to nuclear war than we were on January 1st, 1981? And, uh... 33, 33, 33. So, uh, it's not much help either. <clears throat> well, it's with these people. Uh, let's try another one. Are you for or against the military action in Poland? Here's one that's going to shake up those figures. Okay, another dead end. What are these? Uh, must have pulled 1,500 pinheads here or something. Must have All right, we'll try one more. <laughs> you have a fat cousin named Otis? That's what I thought. That's ridiculous. I'm not surprised. Uh, it's confirmed something I've known all along. 
People are idiots. That's the Friday's poll. Now, as you all probably know, Tony Geary is the star of General Hospital. But I'm sure that very few people realize he is also apparently an authority on the rather complex Middle East situation. So we have asked Tony to join us tonight to enlighten us by sharing some of his very awesome knowledge. Tony? Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Tony. Tony, I personally wasn't really aware of your interest in the Middle East situation. Oh, yeah. Mel, it's like my uh, second love. Well, then, uh, perhaps uh, you would like to take this opportunity to go over for our viewers' uh, sake the events of the past year. Oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, well, first of all, you know, like the Middle East is uh, more than just one country. It, it's a very big, or large, if you prefer, area. And uh, in it, there are several different foreign countries, and they speak several different foreign languages. Uh, so, you know, sometimes because they speak these several different foreign languages, they don't understand each other when they speak. And that really doesn't help the situation at all. Uh -huh. <laughs> what about uh, they're, they're, well, they're, it's a very colorful people, you know. Um, uh, the, the, the costumes, the native costumes, and their dress and everything, and they have these really nice dishes, really fine native dishes. Well, uh, Tony... <laughs> I think that mainly what we're concerned with here tonight are the more specific political events of this past year. Oh, uh, okay. Well, um, well, I know that, you know, recently they had a battle over there. Uh-huh. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sure that we all know which one you were talking about specifically. When, when was that battle? When was that? When? Oh, uh, I think it was the night I saw Love at First Bite. Uh, yeah, that was it. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, you know, I don't want to lie to you, Mel. It's a very serious situation over uh -huh. there. And uh, it's very hot, you know, and yeah. people tend to get cranky. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of that fact. Are you aware of that? No, I, I didn't. Yeah, I guess I knew it was hot. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. well, so have I cleared everything up for you a bit? Well, you bet. Super. Great. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for taking you, the time uh, out to... Uh, uh, wait, no, of course, you know, there are certain things that I am aware of that I am not at liberty to divulge at this time. Oh, well, then we will be sure to have you back real soon to tell Pro us about promise? the rest. You promise? bet. Okay, sure. good. All right. Thanks. Uh, oh, oh, by the way, you know, I'm, I'm also up on the El Salvador situation. Next time, Tony. <laughs> of the year in steam engine technology, here's Darrow Igus. Okay. The year 1981 was not very eventful for the field of steam engine technology. There were no funds for research, no new discoveries, and as far as I could find out, no one even involved in the subject. As a matter of fact, I don't even know why this set was built. <laughs> it's just a big waste of money. Money that could have been used for an in-depth report on something like civil rights or, or something important. But this was a stupid idea. It's obviously the, the, the result of bad planning. Just a damn shame. Back to you. Here to review the top 10 albums of 1981, our very own special mystery guest. <laughs> well, got on the applause light. <laughs> oh, everything seems so real. <laughs> well, it's very nice to have you here, Mr. Mystery Guest. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, Melanie. Should I sit here? We're gonna play the news. Yeah, sure. You got a cigarette? Uh, no, I don't smoke, I'm sorry. Oh. She doesn't smoke, but she does the news. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go down here and do my presentation. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi, Friday fans. This is so stupid. <laughs> Guess who? Self-style curmudgeon of rock and roll mystery guest here to rate the top 10 best-selling LPs of the year of our Lord, 1981. It was another banner year in the biz, as we insiders say. And on behalf of serious musicians everywhere, I sincerely apologize for the petroleum byproducts that passed as albums this year. But you get what you pay for. And most of you little suckers spent your parents' hard-earned money on these musical excursions into conformity and commercialism while great music languished in the bargain bin at the mini-mart. <laughs> Most of you probably aren't even listening to me right now because you're blown away on drugs. Yep. 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 Well, anyway, why don't we look at the top 10 albums of the year? Number 10 on the chart. Yeah, he writes songs about the common working man, but they call him the boss. <laughs> Daryl Hall, John Oates, The Police. Yeah. Eight and nine, proving once again that ripping off black music is always good business. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, pick them up, fool. <laughs> They're free. <laughs> Number seven is ACDC. These guys are from Scotland, man. I don't have anything against Scotland, but they're trying to act like the Bay City Rollers on hard drugs. <laughs> man, yeah, yeah. Nothing more. It makes you nostalgic for bagpipe music. <laughs> Sticks. <laughs> Let's go to their apartment and kill them. <laughs> from the Midwest. <laughs> sort of like the Kingston Trio with an electric guitar. You know? <laughs> they grow these groups out in the Midwest like wheat. <laughs> yeah, who's he? <laughs> Pat Benatar, queen of the spandex. <laughs> Look at her. Who am I? <laughs> Throw away the album. Oh, yeah. Well, it proves we can break the oil companies. <laughs> Christopher Cross. <laughs> well, it proves that ugly people can make bad music. Huh? <laughs> Look at this, Santa Claus. <laughs> Kenny Rogers. <laughs> Number eight. Yeah, he's fat. I don't know how he got there. It must have been luck. This was number two. With a bullet from Mark David Chapman. In tribute to the taste of the American public, the album shot up the charts the day after Lennon was shot. So it don't count. Well... This is the one you've been waiting for. <laughs> Number 10 on the charts. It's a ripoff. <laughs> Music is dead. You're dead for watching this show. <laughs> well, I guess I'm gonna skid out of here. Mel and Rich, have a good time playing at the news. Turn on the applause lights. It makes me feel like I'm at home. message from Brooke Shields. Hi, I'm Brooke Shields. I think 1981 made everybody a year older. Unless you were killed. 
Thank you. This has been one in a series of important messages from Brooke Shields. Well, in closing our year in review, I guess we should mention that any review is basically an exercise in futility. We can't really go back and change or improve the past, but perhaps it's better to just look ahead and into the future. That's why Rich Hall has assembled a panel of experts to predict what lies ahead in 1982. They include noted historian from Harvard, Henry Still Commager, economist Louis Rukeyser, and Bishop Fulton J. Sheen. Rich? Hi, Melanie. Hi, Rich. Uh, where, where are Mr. Comager, Mr. Rukeyser, and, and, and Bishop Fulton J. Sheen? Uh, well, I sort of, uh, screwed up there, Melanie. Um, <laughs> thought I could get him, but uh, I couldn't. But, uh, I do have Miss, uh, Nelta Huffstetler here, who's a <laughs> second grade history teacher in the L.A. school system. Hi, Miss Huffstetler. Uh, it's from a, uh, historical and, uh, political and, uh, religious perspective, uh, what can we look for in 1982? Well, uh, no one really knows Rich. Uh, but I, uh, I kind of, um, I think it's important to keep a current um, event scrapbook. Uh, uh, find a nice, uh, a nice gaily colored notebook that opens like this, and uh, you may want to you may want to decorate it with flowers or parakeets. Right. Parakeet. Uh, then you um, <clears throat> you cut out your news with a, a very safe uh, blunt scissors. Blunt. And you use the mooseleaf. There. And you paste it. And then be sure to clean up after you've finished. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miss uh, Huffstetler. You're welcome. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Rich. For the year in review, I'm Melanie Chardoff. Good night. This has been the Friday edition with Melanie Chartoff and Rich Hall. These guys might not want me to say this, but I think they're funny and really sort of adorable. Here they are, the cars. <laughs>
to the best of my recollection, I've never been on the show. This is my first time. Well, frankly, I never even heard of the show. So when they asked me to be on, I thought it was some sort of joke. I mean, I didn't know. My agent never heard of the show. I don't go to parties much. But I've gotten to know a lot of people in the industry. And I asked around about Fridays, and people just shrugged their shoulders and said, well, isn't it the day of a week or something? It's just one of those things. I mean, Fridays. Now, doesn't that sound like a joke? Okay, so finally, when I found out it was legit, I said, okay, this might be kind of fun. I, I do like working live. But then when I got there, I was so surprised. I mean, I was shocked at what was going on. They wouldn't even give me a script. I kept asking why, and they kept mumbling something about a problem with the duplicating machine or something like that. You know, personally, I don't think they ever had a script. Of course, I can't prove it. But I'm pretty sure they didn't. examining the psychotronic reactor? Oh, yeah, sure, Bill. Uh, <laughs> yeah, now, here are some new threshold codifications for the dimensional frequencies. Mm. Yes, very good, very good, excellent. Thank okay, you. Bill. Yes, I remember very well. I was very big at the time with General Hospital and all. Well, not as big as I am now, of course, but big, you know, <laughs> big, right? And they came to me and they asked me to do Fridays. And I said, you've got to be kidding. Haven't you seen the cover of Newsweek? <laughs> I laughed in their faces. But the thing was, they wouldn't take no for an answer. They begged me to do that show. So I thought I'd make it easy for them, you know. Uh, I'd make an outlandish request to do the show, a ridiculous demand, something they couldn't possibly agree to, and then they'd go away, and that would be it. So I asked them for a piece of the show. And I, I don't mean a, a piece. I mean a piece! I couldn't believe it. They actually said okay. So what was I going to say? I did the show. I can't tell you what a, what a thrill it is to be sitting between you guys. Uh, I'm like your biggest fan, really. You guys are fantastic. I'm really, I, I'm very nervous like around you too. I don't know. <laughs> you guys, I, I, I got to introduce the band. I can't talk anymore. Here are the cars once again.
Yes, I remember when I was on Fridays. What a, what a delightful experience it was. <laughs> Fridays is such a wonderful show. Hey, man, I don't want to do this. Let's hit the music button. I got the brains. Nate, Nate. I got the brains. Nate, Nate. I got the brains, baby. Nate, Nate. I got the brains. Nate, Nate. I got the brains. Nate, Nate. I got the brains. I got the brains. I got the brain. I got the brain. Winner! Yeah! This is David Hartman. Next week, World Series coverage, plus Mrs. Anwar Sadat, Loretta Lynn, Hal Linden, and former President Nixon on Good Morning America. Late night Tuesday, a postman becomes a sweet-playing jazz musician in New Orleans, but dangerous intrigue threatens to turn his dreams sour on Fantasy Island. Late night Tuesday on ABC.